All right, let's begin chapter two of The Language of the Goddess by Maria Gimbutas. This is the first image of chapter two. The blurb reads, triangles and M signs below the breast on masked figurine from South Italy. So here are breasts and here are double axes, triangles and M signs. And you have also a chevron as a necklace. Um, and look at that face. It's just, these things are so old and so vivid. It's really striking. Moving on. The zigzag and M sign, chapter two. So let's look at this uh, image first figure 29 to start. Figure 29, engraved reindeer rib, are you Krunikian, sites of Cro-Magnon, 30,000 BC. Let's make that a little smaller. So there's the reindeer rib with an image of a figure with M's, squiggles on it, 30,000 BC. Maybe it's an animal, maybe it's the goddess, probably both. Okay. Zigzag image of water. In the iconography of all prehistoric periods of Europe, as well as of the whole world, the image of water is zigzag or serpentine. The zigzag is the earliest symbolic motif recorded. Neanderthals used this sign around 40,000 BC or earlier. In the early 1970s, J. Kolozowski found at the Mousterian site of Bachau Kiro in Bulgaria a non-utilitarian fragment of bone that had been engraved with a zigzag motif. Examining it under the microscope, Marshak found that when the marker came to the end of the engraved line of the zigzag, he or she did not lift the tool to make a joining line in the other direction, but left it on the bone and turned and twisted that instead. It is clear that the engraving is an intentional zigzag image. Marshak, 1976. So Marshak wrote this book called The Foundation of Human Civilization that also analyzes these these Paleolithic artifacts, and what Marshak found was that there's a timekeeping system, a very, very ancient timekeeping system that keeps track of the relationship between the moon and the seasons and, and, and things, and it's, it's very sophisticated. I read the first couple of chapters of the book, and I couldn't it was, it was too detailed for me to really follow, but he does some incredibly microscopic analysis, you know, looking looking at these bones and figuring out how the zigzag was drawn to determine that it is indeed a zigzag with its symbolic intent. You know, he works so hard to demonstrate the the feasibility that these artifacts could have been used as calendars tens of thousands of years ago. So that's what that book is about, is is noting that we have been symbolically notating time for at least 30,000 years, if not more. Um, so that's, that's Marshak's contribution. Um, in the Upper Paleolithic, the zigzag is a common motif and appears in association with anthropomorphic bird, fish, and phallic images. At the site of Cro-Magdon in Les Allies, southern France, a reindeer rib dated to 30,000 BC was excavated. We were looking at that rib a moment ago. It has a zigzag pattern uh, along the figure, a water pattern. Engraved on the rib was a crude anthropomorph with bird-like head overmarked with an M and zigzag motif, figure 29. We'll look at that again. It's over here. Come on. There we are. So, I guess we should go smaller, huh? Here's this anthropomorphic image with an M and zigzag. Look at that image. 30,000 years ago. Okay.
If the head of the figure is a water bird, it represents the earliest human water bird hybrid marked with a symbol of water, regenerative force. The zigzag alternates with the M sign, an abbreviated zigzag. In Magdalenian times in later Old Europe, zigzags and M's are found engraved or painted within uterine lenses, vulva shapes, suggesting the symbolic affinity between the zigzag, the M, female moisture, and amniotic fluid. All right, let's see all those connections in figure 30. Here's figure 30. So, from Upper Paleolithic engravings to vase paintings in the first phases in Kekuteni culture. So this is an Upper Paleolithic painting on the cave wall, and this is uh, a bowl of Kukutini culture. So the painting on the cave wall is 15,000 to 13,000 BC, and this vase is 3,500 BC. Uh, the M or extended M sign appear with uterine or vulva shape. So here we have the M inside these 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 vulva shapes here, um, and again you've got chevrons and and squiggles and and things in this vase, and um, here you have uh, the squiggles inside this vulva shape. So like, look at that! Isn't that crazy? Like, here's this symbol of parallel lines forming an oval with a squiggle inside it. Here it is once, here it is again, parallel lines with a squiggle inside it. And then, literally 10,000 years later, parallel lines with the squiggles inside them. Parallel lines with the squiggles inside them. So the continuity of these symbolic motifs is, is just kind of astounding. And, and like I said in the past video, that continuity alone is strong evidence of their symbolic nature. Because if they were if they were more arbitrary, they would have drifted over the preceding ten thousand years. So the fact that they're so highly conserved is evidence of function, right? That's a, a classic evolutionary argument. Conserved sequences tend to be functional sequences. So what could be the function of this pattern? Well, it would have to be symbolic. Okay. Going back. single and multiple M's on vases. The M alone, or in duplicate or triplicate, is frequently the central ornament on vases during the sixth and later millennia in Old Europe. The illustrated examples are from the end of the sixth and fifth millennium, the linear pottery culture of Central Europe, the Skazad group of Hungary, the Koratoloid culture of Switzerland, and late Neolithic Greece. Figure 31. Let's look at all these artifacts. Okay, so she's showing the same M pattern on pottery on across cultures and time. So let's see. The M symbol is related to water and the goddess in her life-given function. It is often incised or painted as the primary decoration on bases. Examples, figure one, M, here's the M, filled with dots, water streams, parallel dots, water streams, from the linear pottery, 5300 to 5100 BC in Holland. Uh, Two, double M engraved in front of an axos, Tsiza, Hungary, 5200 to 5000 BC. There's that M once more. And three, painted pottery fragment with a double M from the late Neolithic Greece. Uh, that's this one, Neolithic Greece, double M. And uh, four, triple M, M, M. Uh, oh, sorry, I was looking at four before. Here, this is the double M from Greece, four, triple M from a late uh, triple M from linear pottery in France. All right, so what does this image prove? It proves that this M design is widespread across across Europe around 5,000 years ago. Okay, let's go back. The sign also appears on Neolithic ceramics of the Near East. In Egypt, dishes of the Naqued period one are decorated with an M sign in association with chevrons. Placement of the M varies. Sometimes it is the sole decoration of a vessel, sometimes engraved above or below the handles, and sometimes confined within a triangular square or lens-shaped panel. Dotted or discontinuous lines occasionally decorate the sign, as on the M engraved in, on the zoomorphic vessel from Batonia, Lower Tisa Basin. 
The aquatic significance of the M sign seems to have survived in the Europe Egyptian hieroglyph M, squiggle, mu, meaning water, in the ancient Greek letter M, mu. Right? So that's crazy. Hold on. Let's, uh, it's just, it's one sentence. Let's, let's zoom in on this sentence. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's just, it's hidden in there. Like, it's just the last sentence of this section. Like, no, no further analysis, but holy crap. Okay, look at this. The aquatic significance of the M sign seems to have survived in the Egyptian hieroglyph, look at that squiggle, called Mu, meaning water, and the ancient Greek letter M, Mu. So, in the introduction, she says that this isn't just a book of archaeology, that it's also a book of comparative linguistics. So we have the Egyptian hieroglyphic system, which emerged around 3500 BC, something around that, and it it was a hieroglyph, so, so its images had iconic pictorial value, but they could also be pronounced. And we find that the Egyptian hieroglyph for water is a squiggle, right? And, and also the Greek letter, and, and, and it's pronounced mu, and there's a Greek letter which is also pronounced mu, which is also that same squiggle. So we have this linguistic evolution from ancient Egypt into ancient Greece, and the name Mu is preserved, as is its squiggling water shape, right? And so then, so we have that linguistic analysis, right? And then we go back to this artifact from 30,000 years ago, and you're like, huh, interesting. Well, that's not a hieroglyph, it's not pronounceable Mu, but yet it's preserved, and, and it's, it's, it's symbolism expands in in complexity but yet it's here 30,000 years ago and there it is in ancient Egypt and then you go and you look at these things you're like huh okay here's that squiggle here's these M's once again and here's more M's and we we realize that 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 there's there's just a huge amount of meaning embedded in these scratch marks um, yeah <laughs> Look at those V's, and the M and the V are linked. Okay, moving on. Figure 2, or section 2.3, M attached to a chevron, or V. A long enduring sign in the Neolithic, Copper, and Early Bronze Ages, which decorates terracotta of the Danubian region and Balkans, is the grappled chevron, consisting of an M on top of an inverted chevron, or V, figure 32. The gabbled chevron examples are from 5000 BC, early Vinca, um, and then a few other places in Eastern Europe. Um, so there's this symbol here, right? And then there's, she talks later, but I'm going to go into it now, is uh, there's this, let's see, I want a new window. Um, there's this symbol called humus. Let's look it up. J-U-M-I-S. Um, this symbol, uh, which is a Latin, uh, a Latvian symbol, it, it, it resembles the two sheaves of wheat but you can see, this is also the logo of Space Future Uploads, one of my YouTube channels, and you can see the similarity of this symbol with this one, right? Even though this, this Latvian symbol is much more modern, it represents an Indo-European god, Humus, right? If we go back, um, it's a Baltic pagan god who personified the harvest. Um, yeah, so... So that's, that's pretty amazing, right? That you see this symbol 7,000 years ago and it's preserved today. You can see it on buildings in Latvia. Um, okay, yes. So it's frequently found inside dishes or on pots, lids, pendants, loom weights, and plaques. Often the sign alternates with meanders, multiple chevrons, and the three parallel lines. The configuration was used over a span of two millennia in all phases of every cultural group. The combination of the chevron and M suggests the intimate relationship between these symbols, right? So, so here we have a chevron, an M, and then a chevron directly underneath it, an M and a chevron directly underneath it. So these symbols are combined, which indicates that they have iconic similarity to one another, 
but you know look at this like this is combined and then this looks like rain here right and then we also have this this form this this anthropomorphic form of arms and legs and like there's these these symbols have multiple valences or like look at this right where you've got this if you see it as a human form with arms and legs and then there's that emphasized vulva that emphasized chevron so these looking at these symbols they have many interpretations you can view them anthropomorphically you can view them as water you can view them as as a symbol for the goddess like there's lots of lots of ways of looking at them and they're all valid because this kind of symbolism doesn't have the kind of fixed meaning that these words the words right next to them which are you know 7000 years more recently evolved um depict okay so figure 2.4 under the face of a deity this the starchevo and tiza groups of southeastern Hundi, hungary and western bulgaria the book culture in northeastern hungary and slovakia the early vinca culture produced large vases pithoi on which a face above an m sign appears here's a face Here's an M sign right over here, and then here's another one. Here's a face, and here's an M sign. The symbolic function of the M is indicated by its consistent position under the visage of the deities, figures 33 and 34. So let's uh, look at, read the, the thing for figure 33. Um, Several old European cultures produced large vases or pithoi upon which the face of the goddess floats above an M sign. The implication that these water containers are sacred to the goddess, who is the source of moisture and life, is reinforced by the presence of additional aquatic symbolism. Meanders, look at that, look at those meanders, right here. Um, large bands of running spirals, parallel and stabbed lines, and checkerboard patterns. And then here's another one. Wow, they're so beautiful. And and again, right, these are vessels, right? Vessels with the face of the goddess on them. And what is the vessel going to hold? Well, almost certainly it's food, right? Like either it's water or it's grain or it's something else. And so you have this embodiment of the mother, right, who contains the source of life. That, that, that symbolism is so intense. And it's literally on every vessel you probably ever would have touched. Um, with all of these symbols of, of water and fertility. Um, the symbolic function of the M is indicated by the consistent position under the visage of the deity. The goddess's relationship to water is further emphasized by running spirals, meanders, frame nets and checkerboards, and stab designs which cover which the bodies of these vessels are covered. A linear pottery vase in of the Zizek complex in Budapest also bears the same motif, figure thirty five. Alright, so let's look at we haven't, so she's talked about figures 34 and 35, but we haven't looked at them yet. So let's look at them now. Wow. That's figure 34. Wow. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Um, so you have this face and this checkerboard pattern. There's an M there. Um, figure 34. Uh, let's make it smaller. On this anthropomorphic pithos, the M is associated with the brush signs, nets, and meanders. On brick red surface, the arms are painted red and yellow, and the belt around the body is white. Tsiza group, Hungary, 5000 BC. And then here's figure 35. The linear pottery vase represents a pared down version of the goddess face above the motif. Look at that face with an M underneath, right? Like, so this symbol, like, she's just shown us, like, what, six different vases that all have a face on the neck and an M underneath? Like, that's, that's pretty remarkable. All of which, yeah, I mean, 7,000 years old. The conjunction of the M sign with the face of the divinity on large water containers is significant. Moreover, this divinity is associated with the design motifs which comprise old European aquatic symbolism. This strengthens the implication that water containers were sacred to the goddess and whose power was the source of the water of life. 
the meaning of these symbolic associations is deepened when we consider that the M sign is also encountered below the goddess's breast, the source of milk and, and universal nurture, as is illustrated in this example from Pisayo de Kori, a Neolithic settlement in southeastern Turkey. So now she's going to show us an image of a vase of, oh right, this was the first image that we looked at, right? So here there are these M signs underneath the breast, so it's associating this, which we know from a Greek hieroglyph means water, with the breast, right? Um, so there's life, life-giving function of water. The M sign also appears on figurines, particularly below the breasts, source of milk and nurture. This masked figurine also have M's on her back as she wears a V-shaped necklace. Notice the butterfly symbols of regeneration beneath the M's, Neolithic, 5300 BC. All right, I think that is the whole of chapter two. I'm pretty sure we've done everything. Yeah, so to summarize, chapter two has goes into this symbol, um, and I think the strongest piece of evidence for this symbol being important comes here, right, the, with this sentence. I'm going to read this sentence again. The aquatic significance of the M sign seems to have survived in Egyptian hieroglyph M, Mu, meaning water, and the ancient Greek letter Mu. So what she's shown is we have modern linguistic evidence of the meaning of this symbol, and it's a symbol that goes back 30,000 years in all of these different forms. Um, yeah, so that's pretty special. Next we were going to do chapter 3. I'll see you there.